Okay, so the second lecture is going to be on the second quantization. And uh, there are plenty of books that uh, cover the subject. Uh, it's a very well known and established uh, topic. And here are the some uh, books that uh, I like to use uh, when I refer to this subject. And uh, the main motivation for second quantization, it's uh, one of the easiest forms of uh, electronic structure theory to connect with the qubit formalism that uh, is uh, going to be used for uh, quantum computing. Okay. Now, in order to understand second quantization, uh, we will kind of review a little bit of the electronic structure and first quantization. What are the problems there? Now, this is the equation for the electronic structure problem that we um, finished the previous lecture with. And essentially what we have here is the electronic wave function with the small r electronic variables. Here they are. We have n electrons. Uh, those are our electronic variables. We fix the nuclei as parameters and uh, that they're still uh, present in the, in the equation, right? We also have electronic Hamiltonian here containing four terms, uh, kinetic energy of electrons and Coulomb terms uh, for the all charged particle interaction. Uh, those terms are easier to write in so-called atomic units where uh, some constants are all equal to one, like mass of electron, Planck constant, uh, unit of charge. Uh, so in order to avoid uh, carrying all these constants, it's just uh, the easiest form is to write them in atomic units. And uh, those are the operators that you get. Um, then in order to solve for electronic function, it's still a hard problem because the number of electrons can be large and uh, the dimensionality grows with the number of electrons. And with dimensionality, the complexity of the problem uh, grows exponentially, essentially. Like before, we have exponential growth with the, uh, of complexity for the uh, wave function uh, with the number of electrons here. We remove the nuclei though for now. Okay, so how do we address this uh, growth of complexity? And one of the approaches that uh, chemists love is uh, uh, using uh, so-called molecular orbitals or physically speaking, it's a one electron picture. So now the idea here is that uh, even though we have many electrons, maybe in some molecule like water, but uh, all of them, first of all, indistinguishable. And uh, then it's kind of natural to think about them as uh, governed by uh, wave functions for each electron that uh, lives by the laws and, uh, of, uh, of a single particle. And maybe uh, that, that kind of those laws respond to one electron filling others in that kind of mean field uh, way. And uh, that's of course approximation because all the electrons are somewhat correlated in the real objects. But if we ignore for now this correlation, we can formulate equations for this one particle uh, wave functions. And that's what uh, Hartree and Falk did back in uh, the beginning of 20th century. They introduced this F uh, Falk operator that uh, also differential operator, but it's a simple differential uh, operator uh, compared to the electronic Hamiltonian. It only acts on one electron coordinate, and uh, this equation can be solved uh, numerically. It's been solved on computers relatively easily. Even a classical computer doesn't pose exponential complexity anymore, and that generates essentially this orbitals that uh, are wave functions that create the uh, one particle picture for each electron. And then in order to construct the n electron wave function, we will combine them to like a product of some kind. But we cannot take just a simple product because uh, what happens is that we need to account for the anti-symmetric property of the uh, electronic function because electrons are fermions. And even though they are indistinguishable, when we change the uh, coordinates of two particles, then the wave function needs to change the sign. So the product will not just account for that sign change. In order to um, kind of introduce this anti-symmetry, 
uh, we need to go to a special products, anti-symmetric products. The easiest way to illustrate that would be to take the two electron example, where for the total wave function, we can write this linear combination of this xi, ij functions, and uh, those are gonna be Slater determinants. For the two electron case, uh, they are relatively uh, easily looking uh, functions because uh, all we need is just to take a product of two orbitals in a different order. And if you now look what happens in that uh, psi basis function, when we change the R1 and R2, it changes the sign naturally because of the uh, minus sign in the, in the Slater determinant. And what this leads to is uh, we satisfy the overall anti-symmetry of the our wave function uh, quite easily. So now if we construct our wave function out of this uh, combination of Slater determinants, where in each Slater determinant we change what pairs of uh, orbitals we, we put, we can uh, create a practically uh, very accurate representation of uh, uh, two electron wave functions. Of any kind, right? Now, in order to move on towards the second quantization, uh, it turns out uh, what we can do now, once we have these orbitals or one particle basis uh, at the background, we can uh, now focus at uh, expressing the total wave function as just a linear combination of the Slater determinants. And the way we can write the Slater determinants instead of writing them like a really like a determinant of the orbital functions, we can uh, just simply denote all the Slater determinants as uh, a string of ends. Uh, each end corresponds to the occupation of a particular orbital. This one corresponds to the first orbital, second, and so on, up to the uh, number of orbitals that we have. And those ends can be either zero or one, depending on whether we have that orbital in the uh, our Slater determinant or not. So zero corresponds to absent orbital and one corresponds to the present orbital. Now, to illustrate what this uh, amounts to in the two electron case, uh, this is the two electron case in the first quantization here uh, and uh, in the new form, which is called Fox space or occupation space, we can write the same Slater, uh, linear combination of Slater determinants as some coefficients multiplied by this uh, record where we uh, change where the ones appear at what positions. And uh, positions i and j would correspond to uh, this line of zeros and ones of i and j place. So now, what did we achieve really by, by doing all that? Um, we can express the function now not only in the coordinate space, but in all other uh, possible ways because it's a Brian cat notation of Dirac now. And uh, additionally, we can easily write down not only two electron cases, but put in more ones, uh, essentially put in more uh, identities in the occupations of other orbitals. Uh, we can go to uh, describing the three electron case, five electron case, or any number of electron case, as long as we have orbitals to accommodate all that. Now, in order to complete the picture, and have a full formalism, we need to take care of the operators because quantum mechanics works with both wave functions and operators. Uh, now, in first quantization, uh, what uh, operators do, they take a wave function. So here, the operator O acting on our two electron example wave function, and it should create, give us a new wave function. How does it do it? All the physical operators are Hermitian and linear. So, the linear operator will go through the constants and will start acting on the our basis functions, which is later determinants in this case. Now, because we have a, a assumption that our base is close to complete, otherwise uh, it wouldn't be accurate to express things in, in complete basis. Then any action of the operator in complete basis on the basis function can be written as linear combination of uh, of the basis functions essentially. So that means that operator modifies the coefficients of that expansion uh, practically. And we always have basis functions, uh, all basis functions present essentially. Now, how does this work in the second quantized form? The same way we need a, a kind of way uh, of introducing operators that will change the basis functions. And our basis functions is strings with uh, occupations. Now, there are two types, 
turns out there are two types of operators that you only need to introduce. You can build all other operators out of them. That's a creation of the particle. And uh, it's denoted like this, a dagger i. Uh, I subscript means uh, what, what position this uh, A operator acts on. And uh, uh, it's called creation because what it does, it uh, increases the occupation if it's zero. But if it, the occupation is already one, then you cannot populate the orbital uh, twice. It just would violate the Pauli exclusion principle. The fermions can uh, only occupy uh, one orbital, well, spin orbital at the same time. And uh, that's why we have delta Kronecker here. But if it's, uh, but if occupation of uh, i orbital is zero, then it becomes one when a dagger i acts on it. And the only thing that is left to discuss really is that because again, we're working with fermions, you need to change the sign if uh, there is an odd number of uh, orbitals that are occupied before the one that uh, you uh, occupy now with the a dagger i. So similar idea uh, works for the annihilation operator where we don't have dagger, just a i. What it does, it kills the occupation on the i orbital if it, uh, i orbital has it, but if uh, n i is already zero, then, then the annihilation of uh, nothing gives you zero. Uh, essentially as a result. So those two operators are the only ones you actually need to then write down any, any operator that uh, will modify your basis functions and uh, that, will, that will do. Now to summarize uh, what the second quantized formalism does, it can, uh, can be used here for, is uh, we take the electronic structure problem and we uh, remove the electronic variables write our wave functions as a linear combination in the occupation space where uh, we use Slater determinants in this abstract notation without coordinate dependence, but only uh, the only dependence we leave is uh, the occupation of orbitals that uh, we have at the background. And uh, all our operators, like electronic operator in this case, can be written as linear combination of some products of A and A dagger for CRISP for some orbitals uh, multiplied by some coefficients. So there is, a, there is a derivation of those operators in the textbooks. I don't want to go there. Uh, you can look at the details if you want. And here I would like to just to uh, give you a few elements how this works on the, on the example that uh, like we already consider hydrogen molecule in the simplest basis, uh, STO3G, that's the basis of uh, functions in which we solve hard to fork equations. Now this is the, one of the smallest basis and uh, what it produces is actually two orbitals or four spin orbitals in, in the case of uh, hydrogen molecule. So those orbitals have uh, different energies and uh, if you have two electrons, you can put them on the two electrons, uh, sorry, on the two orbitals in this four configurations uh, with a condition that uh, say overall spin is zero, singlet state, right? But what uh, one needs to remember always when we work with the second quantized Hamiltonian, it can act potentially on the functions with two electrons, three electrons or one electron. So the number of electrons not anymore fixed uh, by the Hamiltonian. Uh, before in the first quantization, because we had electronic variables, the number of uh, electrons was fixed. But in the second quantized form, the number of electrons is not fixed. And therefore, uh, the states that are present in this occupation space, uh, they're just more numerous. And uh, we have states of one electron, for example, uh, states of up to four electrons. As, as long as uh, we have orbitals to put these electrons, uh, then we can we can have those states and uh, say triplet states are also uh, can be present uh, in this uh, formalism as well. With that, I would like to thank you for your attention and leave you with some questions for further discussion.